Psychology is a scientific study of the mind and human behavior. So for psychology to be born, we need two things to happen. We need people asking questions about the mind and how humans work, and then we need a scientific method of inquiry to develop. Some of the first people to ask questions about the mind were the ancient Greek philosophers. First up, we have Plato and Socrates. Now they believed in something called dualism. Dualism is the idea that our mind and our physical body are separate. Plato even believed that if the body died, the mind would live on and find a new body. Another thing that Plato and Socrates thought was that knowledge was innate, which means they thought that all knowledge came from within. But I'm sure you can think of things that you've learned from experience, like basically everything you've learned in school. So these guys can't be right. And that's exactly what Aristotle thought. Aristotle was one of Plato's students and he actually disagreed with him on both issues I've just discussed. First off, he rejected the idea of dualism. Aristotle thought that our bodies and our minds were inseparable and we call this monism. And in modern psychology, we know that this is true. If you damage a person's brain, which is their physical body, then you damage the mind. The second thing that Aristotle disagreed with was the idea that knowledge comes from within. A lot of Aristotle's contributions to biology were based on observations, and observations are a form of experience that is external. So you might be thinking that Aristotle gets an easy two to zero score here. You know, of course knowledge comes from experience, but it's actually a little bit more complex than that. Humans do have some pre-programming, which is why we learn to speak languages and cats don't. And the extent to which our behavior is predetermined by genes versus how much is determined by the environment is called the nature-nurture debate in psychology. And we'll come back to this later. Okay, moving on. Another significant thinker from the time period was Hippocrates. Hippocrates was a bit older than Aristotle, so he believed in dualism. But despite that, he came up with the idea that our physical bodies can impact our minds. So for example, he had this idea that we have four different fluids. They called them humors in our bodies and that the balance or imbalance of humors would change your personality. For example, he thought that people who had a lot of red blood might be more friendly or people who had too much yellow bile would be bitter, short tempered or might like taking risks. And people who have too much black bile would be more lazy, fearful and kind of prone to getting sick. And finally, the fourth one, people who had a lot of phlegm in their system, he thought they were all low spirited and kind of forgetful. So as all this this stuff about humor is true? Of course it isn't. But it's a step in the right direction because it got people thinking about the link between our bodies and our minds. Okay, so that's Hippocrates. Let's fast forward a little bit, like 2,000 years. In the 1500s, there was a guy named Sir Francis Bacon, and he's been credited with creating the scientific method. So what exactly is the scientific method? Well, scientists make observations, come up with some kind of hypothesis to explain why something is happening, and then design an experiment to test it. Then, if the data supports their hypothesis, they accept it until new data gives them a reason not to. So for example, Bacon thought that external factors like being wet or cold could make people sick. So to test it, he had some healthy people stand out in the rain to see if they'd get sick. Not a very nice experiment, but it's effective. Okay, so at this point, we've got people asking the right questions, and now we've got a scientific method of inquiry. So the stage has been set for the foundation of psychology. All that needs to happen is for someone to apply the scientific method to the study of the mind and human behavior. And that person was Wilhelm Wundt in 1879. And his ideas are the subject of our next video.